Well here are my clean shutter blades ready to be put back into the shutter. You'll see that the second blade here is a different shape. It's got a steeper cutout in the back of the blade here than the other ones here, one, three, four and five. And that's to clear a position in the shutter where the shaft comes through. If you mix them up or put it in the wrong place you end up in problems because the shutter won't want to fully open, it'll just jam. The sixth blade is the cover blade. The cover blade's a narrow blade that just covers the position of the first blade and it stops the possibility of oblique angle light rays passing through underneath the shutter blades when the shutter's in the closed position. It's an issue with cameras that have interchangeable lenses. With uh, fixed lens cameras it's nowhere near as much of an issue. So there's the blades and now I will assemble them to the shutter. So here's the mechanism plate. I'll just check that I've got this correctly positioned. I have not. It should be sitting this way. This is the blade's open position. I'll pop that down there and I'll get a toothpick to help me manoeuvre blades into position and start with blade number one. Blade number one goes here. Blade number two, this is the one with the cutout in the back of it, goes here. And you can see the cutout clears that hole there. And what I'm very interested in finding out, of course, is whether those blades with slight distortions on them, because somebody poked at them with a screwdriver, whether that's going to cause an issue in function. I don't think it will do. And here's blade number six, which is the cover blade and goes back directly over blade number one, which is here. Now I'm going to swing those blades in slightly so that they it's easier to get the case over the top. So I'll just swing them in slightly from the edge of the case so none of the blades are sticking out beyond the perimeter. If you go past that point, it'll immediately want to shift markedly because of the um, detent spring. Now I'm just going to lift the case over here, so I'm just going to, there's a knot, there's a hole on the back here, a square hole, which you have to get the round peg through. And holding it together between finger and thumb I'll just put that down back down on my block and get my three case screws and get them started. Let's do those up lightly. There's always a possibility a blade has been dislodged while you're lifting the case over it and you do not want to trap the blade between one of the pivot pins and the case and do the screws up tight. Right, so we'll move the blade actuating ring back. You can see it pops back into the closed position nicely. And that's moving very smoothly. So I'll do my three case screws up. Check the action again. Again, that's nice and smooth, and our blades look nice and clean. There's no obvious problem there. You can't see the marks on the blades in the closed position. Right from the back of the blade, I can see a mark there. And the edge of the blade, a blade obviously has a mark on it. But again, I can't really pick where that is. That's, it's back out of the way. You can't see it. Those imperfections on the blades are completely invisible. 
So there is the shutter blades in place and I can start reassembling the mechanism, all the bits and pieces to the mechanism plate from there. So I'll clean up the parts so that uh, with some naphtha so that the reassembly process goes fairly quickly. I'm carrying on reassembling the shutter now. First thing I'm going to put some molybdenum paste on that detent spring there. And on the post that it acts against. There are two spots on the blade actuating ring here where it picks up or it's picked up by the main drive cam. I'll just put a couple of spots on there. Just check that that moves smoothly. It feels good. And start putting some pieces back in here. I'll start with a spring which goes on right here. Now this one's keen to get away so I'll hold a toothpick over the center of that post so that it can't spring off. Pick up the end of the spring, lift it across, at least that's the theory. Get back where I started. Here we are. Pick up the end of the spring, lift it across. And tuck it down behind that pin here so that this piece is now sprung loaded and this piece is sprung loaded. And the spring didn't get a chance to disappear off into the bushes anywhere. Right, I think at this stage I can put the setting lever back in place for the self timer and so forth. There's a little detent spring down in here on the inside of the case. I'm just put a touch on there. This is molybdenum paste and on this little ratchet area here some a touch on there. We can just that could go, oh, I'll put another spring in first, I'll put the B lever in, I think that's, that's easier to deal with. So the B lever. So this spring loaded lever here, that I've, the one that I've just put the spring on, I'll hold that back. Push the blade actuating ring round until the shutter is fully open. Drop the B lever into position. Of course that's relaxed now, it can drop right down into the in against there and the spring that holds that in place I've got that here and I've got to get this screw down in there and then swing this spring around into position this is awkward because the spring is catching on the edge of the lens tube and wanting to make the screw go crooked so it's a fight against the spring if I can get that screw started or be in business. Right, I've got the screw started. I've got to swing this tail of the spring right round over here and right round this side of the lever. That's it. Now I'll do my screw up and check that the B lever is free to move and it's sprung loaded. That's good. If I hold the B lever back with my finger I can pull the blades back into the closed position. That's all done. Tighten that screw. Now I can put this in position. The post on it has to go behind that spring so that the spring is tending to hold that in a closed position. Where are we? 
over here. I'm going to pull that spring back slightly to allow that to drop behind it. That's better. That's all firmly in, in position now. And this piece can go on. There's a hole in here that that tube comes up through. And if you press on this lever here, it'll allow it to drop back in against the setting lever. And there are three screws that hold this plate in position. That screw head's a little bit damaged. There's a little thread of metal coming off there. I'll just take that away so it doesn't fall off later and cause me any grief. Put the other two screws in. Here we go. That's done. Next. I'll take the pallet wheel, drop it over its pin, there's the sector gear that drives the pallet wheel, I've got that here, I'll just put a touch of molybdenum paste on the tip of the catch there, where it catches in the cocked position, so that it catches and releases smoothly. And I'll get this seated on its pivot. Make sure it's not trapped under that lever. That's better. Then I can fit its return spring in place. Which I need my pliers for again. Got my spring and I'll hook that over its post there, stretch it out and hook it into the hole in that arm. So now that the sector gear is latches into the cocked position and as the shutter starts to fire it's released and it drives the pallet wheel and that times the um, flash sink so that the shutter is actually released after the flash is fired. That's the bulb flash. Bulb flash requires that the shutter is released first. The uh, flash is fired first to give it a chance to burn at peak brilliance by the time the shutter is fully opened. All right, I'll just put a wipe of molybdenum paste through this sprung loaded piece. I'll get that in the case over its post And pop it down. It sits under that flash contact there and the spring on that should be against the inside of the case not sticking up in the air or anything odd like that otherwise things will not go well. The moving flash contact can go in now on top of that piece Just checking the way that's seated, it looks okay. And the catch, the piece that goes over the top, I need to cock this first, which allows the arm to drop down behind there, so I can get this in place. It sits over the pivot of the pallet wheel and on a post at either end like that. And that arm's free to float. One small screw at this end. A screw 
and a return spring at this end. And while we've been talking, the spring has made a break for freedom. I'll have to find that. Well, it hadn't made a very good break for freedom. It wasn't far away at all. The shoulder screw, the screw's got a shoulder on it that the spring is free to move around. I'll get that seated. And check that the spring is free to move. Yeah, it is. It's not trapped underneath or anything. So I can do up that screw. Check its mate. And that spring has to be brought back behind the arm here now. So I've got to lift up the end of it. Swing it behind this arm. There's a notch in the back of that arm that the spring seats into. So this is now sprung loaded. And that's the latch that holds the main cam in the cocked position. So I'll put a wipe of molybdenum and paste on that little latch so it drops in smoothly. And I'm going to put the shutter release shaft in place now, the shutter release lever, which sits over here. and must fit so that it lifts the B lever and the end of the spring has to be lifted up right the way across the top and tucks down underneath this plate. Yeah, that's quite strongly spring loaded. The main drive cam Usually I just put a wipe of molybdenum paste through the centre, just, just lightly. That curved surface, I lubricate that. And the two pickup points here and here, where it's going to pick up the blade actuating ring. Swing that round to the park position against the post. And here's the main drive spring. And I've got one here that's got quite good tension on it. It uh, should produce good results. Now when the springs lack tension, um, because effectively they've been overstressed because they were always you know, under-designed if you like. When they lack tension, the, the problems you'd like you to strike are that the highest shutter speed will be low, slow, and at the slowest shutter speeds you may find that the shutter blades are reluctant to close completely occasionally, although that particular fault is usually only evident in shutters that really do need a clean. Right, so that spring's in place now, I've got to lift the end of it over. If I can get, get it in place. The pin on the spring should be sitting in the hole on that arm. There it is. Now I've got to get that. This tag on the spring has got to come all the way around to here. This is something that's very easy with tired old springs and not so easy when you've got one that's got a bit of life to it. My tweezers are giving me grief today, I'm not sure what the problem is. Have a damaged tip on them. Yeah, just needed the uh, finger over the top so that you couldn't see what I was doing. So I can maintain my trade secrets.
there's our shutter all working and at this stage I need to put the speed trains back in the uh, retard gear train and the self timer which are now been cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and will just have to be brought out blown out with a bit of air lubricated with a bit of graphite powder right so cock the shutter first take my retard gear train put that in position hold back this tab so that it's drops behind the point on the blade actuating ring that moves it the pivot screw goes through at this end pull that lever back it was trying to get away the other small screw goes down here now that so hole in that in the base of the retard gear train is oversized it allows for adjustment at this point so you can swing the retard gear train in closer to the cam for greater engagement or further away for less engagement we're going to want mostly fairly good engagement because I know that the speed the cam the main drive spring is in quite good condition now the other speed train of course is our self timer or delay delay action and that needs to be swung into place to get that over the pin here on the setting ring let's get that in place get this seated in the case correctly it's sitting oddly at the moment that's better there's a screw on the, the base of this and it drops into a little hole in the in the um, mechanism plate that locates it and there's a single screw that holds it at this end right so we'll test both speed trains cock the shutter cock the main spring there press in the button here hold that in cock the self timer release the shutter hold back this tab which will start the self timer self timer is now running down and there's the shutter running and timing out and giving us somewhat something roughly one second in length there and that, that worked nicely. You could see that the shutter was quite snappy in its action, that the shutter blades opened promptly, and more importantly, that they closed promptly. Because that was certainly the notable problem before with the shutter, was the shutter blades failed to close smoothly. So, what have we got next? Well, the pinion did actually cocks the shutter from the mechanism behind it that can go in place the internal cocking ring I'm wiping some molybdenum paste around the inside and outside edges of that not much This sits, the spring hooks over a post there on the latch that holds the shutter open, or holds the shutter from firing until the self timers run down. It sits over there. You can get that in position. So, 
this plate has to pick up the lever here on the self timer it's also supposed to be engaged with our pinion here there it is of course the shaft on the back of the pinion is pushing me out at the moment there it is so that the tooth on the pinion drops into the first groove on that cocking ring that's all sitting there nicely at the moment I'll put the shut, shutter speed settings cam plate in place so I'll wipe around the inside edge and the outside edge with some molybdenum paste and underneath here because this rubs on the case this part where the shutter speed settings are being made I can put that in place here check that everything's sitting correctly that the B lever is not trapped underneath it seems okay and the retaining ring can be clipped into place check that looks okay seems fine now if I cock the shutter set the speed to say an eighth of a second to be there see what sort of result we get that was slow so that means I've got the main drive cam too close the uh, speed train is too close to the main drive cam I need to move it out slightly for lesser engagement and if I cock the shutter I can just about get access to the screw that locks it without taking everything apart so set that round to the B got access to the screw here now slacken it off slightly move the speed train out slightly tighten the screw again and try it again on an eighth on an eighth of a second and see what it's like that was much better um, it certainly wasn't slow might be a bit fast I'll try on a 15th those speeds are pretty good I'm going to go and test those on my shutter speed tester I suspect they're pretty close to what I need them to be back shortly <laughs>